I think I'm on. I hope my sound's okay. Uh, greetings, Fair Evelyn. I am Smelly V, and I'd like to welcome you either to or back to my channel where the topic of conversation is all fragrance all the goddamn time. I'm leading, as always, with the disclaimer that I am not an expert, not training to be, not claiming to be. Um, just here to give my low-level opinion uh, from the perspective of a consumer um, about all the yummy fragrances I come across and, and learn about and uh, feel deeply. Okay, I invite you all to engage me in the comment section. I'm here for the community. I'm not, you know, into, you know, luxury and, you know, trying to posture myself a particular way um, or to create distance between myself and my audience by way of what I can have and y'all can't. I'm not coming from that place. This ain't that channel. <laughs> Um, so if you, if you, you know, in it for the community, in it for the exchange, you're in the right place. All that out the way. Um, uh, forgive me, my energy seems low. I am a little tired. It's been a long week. I work in healthcare. It's grueling. Blah, 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 blah. But, uh, I'm in good spirits despite my energy being low. Because my birthday is Monday. Pisces season. <laughs> Pisces season. Um, I've taken the day off ahead of that, so I'm looking forward to the rest, the peace, the quiet, the being in my house for a uh, full 24 hours and having time on my own. Um, grateful to have another year under my belt, to have uh, lived, loved, laughed, matured. Um, grateful for the ways my mind has changed moving into this new year. Um, in my palette as well, uh, which brings us to the topic of the night, which is mature fragrances, quote unquote dated fragrances, and what distinguishes them as such. I was thinking about it the other day, like, because I was talking about um, or wanting to talk about one of my favorite vintage fragrances and just sort of just trying to craft the language in my head of how I would describe this, how, how would I convey this to people? And I always feel compelled to lead with, you know, it smells dated when I'm talking about a lot of the fragrances I really do love, just because there's a stigma around anything that isn't, you know, out of the contemporary houses, you know, with the, with the, the uh, uh, fragrance profile that's popular today. It's not gourmand, it's not fresh, it's not, you know, super citrusy. Um, it, it just, me with my low level of knowledge, trying to really, really sit with and figure out what distinguishes a, more, a, a fragrance we smell and right away call granny fragrance or dated versus the stuff that's, you know, widely acceptable right now and that, that doesn't stick out if you wear it in the room. I look at the ingredients, or the notes rather, and compare and they line up and I'm just like, they're pretty much, it's the same, we've been using the same stuff since the dawn of time for fragrances, so what is it that's making a difference in how these things are, you know, how, they, how they're, you, I guess it's, it's the levels of, you know, the, uh, what am I trying to say here? You know the amounts you know in which they combine these things i, I don't know what it is and in, in trying to make the distinction for me i'm thinking i'm realizing and especially in doing the research for tonight's um presentation it a lot of the fragrances that are you know distinctively dated feature you know iris patchouli heavy um oak moss, civet, not so much like oud, which I thought would be more present. Not really in older fragrances. They, they really rely on heavy yellow florals and mossy notes and musk and stuff like that. Just in configurations that are much, much different than what they really led with and, and were heavy on the things that we sort of just sprinkle in or touch on now and surround with a bunch of sweet. Um, in order to forgive the stronger notes, their their intensity. I don't like that. I'm finding that I prefer, and I'm doing doing so a little more vocally these days. I prefer dated fragrances, much like with fashion or with music or anything you know surrounding the arts. Intellect in general, I, I tend to veer off 
and saunter along the uh the the road less traveled roads less traveled i don't really it's alarming to me um and it makes me uncomfortable sort of the the ways people succumb to the pressures of needing to be approved of needing to be in the in the the bulk, the larger group you know when the i don't know it's very difficult to 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 find verbiage <laughs> for, for what i what i feel about it being i didn't really sit and think about it um beforehand but I, i'm committed all that to say i'm committed for myself and my channel and what i'm trying to do to not succumb to the pressure to you know hold up a, a pretty bottle that's current and buy a house that people know and like and you know trying to keep up with the joneses when my what makes my heart sing is them old ass <laughs> strong pungent unique um commanding and challenging complex and nuanced fragrances that are as old as you and me um and older in many cases i, I don't really love a lot of what's what's contemporary contemporary and even the things that i do end up loving their granddaddy or their grandma is you, you know they 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 get their they nod to the things of the past that we shun now like they get their dna from those fragrances like so why, why are we, I don't know, it's weird. Like, where, did, where did the stigma come from? Like, oh, that's granny fragrance. So, <laughs> granny pulls something, your ass is here. <laughs> that's neither you nor there. Let me take a breath and collect my thoughts and get into my favorite quote unquote vintage dated fragrances that I wear today without apology. Okay, we'll get into it. Okay, so if I can keep track, I'm going to try to do these in order of the oldest and, you know, work my way back toward the most modern ones of them all, if not ending with my favorite one of them all. So that one might be a little out of order in terms of, you know, not, it's not going to be chronological. Neither you nor there. So let's look at one we all know. Um, Shalomar. I, I have... Shalomar, it's, it's very tiny. The EDT, I don't wear it very often. I believe this was crafted in 1925. I don't know how much this, the, you know, the composition has changed over time, if this is the 1925 version or not, but Shalomar itself, like the house, the wine, the whatever you want to call it, is oldest, older than any of us, and still just maintains its Splendid to me. I think it's wonderful. This is wonderful. And none of these, none of these new fragrances can touch it. If you, if you ask me, there's nothing like it. Nothing holds a candle to it to me. It is, and not in any particular order. I don't have these ordered by um, head, heart, base at all. It's just. Uh, have the notes just to give sort of, I need to breeze through these because I have a lot of fragrances on this table right now. Um, there's a bergamot, floral notes, iris, jasmine, rose, vanilla, tonka. Like I said, familiar notes to us just in it configured in such a way that they are just, oh, it's just good. This has a smokiness to me. It's leathery, um, powdery. And just beautifully sweet. Um, not really going into this to give a you know a quality review. Just you know naming things that I think are beautiful and have have lasted and still are just as wonderful today as they've ever been, um, and will continue to be. Um, I have the Charlemagne um, Eau de Cologne as well, which doesn't have the sweetness that has all the sort of the. It's still floral, still got that leathery aspect to it. A bit of smoke. <sighs> Oh, I just love these. I love Charlemagne. And it took, those had to grow on me. I don't know if they had to grow, if it's that they had to grow on me or if the, if my bottles just matured in a way that now everything's just perfect. 
neither here nor there. So moving on from that, I was just discussing this one last evening. Um, one of you brought it up, but forgive the name escapes me at the moment, but you know who you are. Taboo, which you reminded me of. I was like, I have that, and I do freaking love it. Taboo, I'm, I said I wasn't gonna spray my skin because I have so many things and I don't wanna lose track of them on my arm, have them all blending together. I don't know if I have enough of my little blotters here. I need to cut some more. I keep these on my dress. I, I keep um, on my little fragrance counter. I, I use these little dry um, dry cloths for my face. I never use a washcloth or a towel, like a reusable towel of any sort on my face. I always use disposable dry wipes to dry my face and all that stuff. And I also use them to create blotters for my fragrances or for my dresses so that I don't have to spray myself to decide what to wear in the morning. I can spray something and it's like, oh, lit next. <laughs> I need to cut some more though. Um, but I pulled these out for the purposes of this. I also keep coffee on my on my whole fragrance dresser. So Taboo. Do I need to spray Taboo? We all know Taboo. Launched in 1932. It's a Dana fragrance. I used to also love, um, what is it? The Love's, is it Baby Soft? Something like that. Oh, I used to love that stuff. That's actually one of the first little fragrances I ever had. I was a little thing then. And I think my granny bought it for me. My little bottom, little round top. Mm -hmm. If I could, I'm gonna find this stuff and get it out still with it. I loved that stuff. Such nostalgia. But Taboo, 1932, I did not write out the notes listing because I do believe many of us are familiar, very familiar with this. Root beer, it's a root beer blast. It's like incense root, <laughs> like incense root beer to me. It comes across a little chocolatey, you just ever so slightly with vanilla and just amber and all these wonderful spices. I do love Taboo. Never gets old. This is another one that is, has truly stood the test of time. Like many of the fragrance, uh, fragrances of today, I do not believe we'll be able to. I don't believe they're built for it. Um, next up, let's see. We're trying to do these in order of year. Where do we go? So let's go 87 and i've mentioned this one in a previous video this is one of my favorite things um i got this as well where did i get this where did i get this oh from this little boutique perfume store that sells stuff that's been discontinued or you know hard to find or whatever the case capucci de capucci by roberto capucci came out in 1987. I mentioned it in my little Valentine's video I did uh, a little before Valentine's Day, but I don't know that I listed the notes in that one. I really don't remember. Um, the top notes are aldehydes, coriander, peach, green notes, lemon, bergamot. In the mid, you have tuberose, ylang ylang, rose, carnation, jasmine, lily of the valley. In the base, you have oak moss, leather, patchouli, civet, amber, coconut, vetiver, and cedar. This is the most perfect shit. I love this. I love it. I love this. It's wonderful by itself. Bathe in it. I bathe in it. And I've been trying to like conserve this just because my fears I won't be able to. So far, I've been able to still find it online. I check from time to time. Like, are there bottles still there? Are there bottles still there? Um, just to make sure it's not going to be one of those things I use up the bottle and can never find it again. But I, you know what I said, I'm going to spray it on my skin, but I'm going to do this. I love this stuff. <laughs> it's so freaking good. If you can find this, you come across it, Capucci, that Capucci. Get it. Thank me later. This is beautiful and it's always going to be beautiful. I don't see there ever being a, a time in history, <laughs> you know, in the future. I, I don't see there being a time where that this is an likable, wearable fragrance. Beautiful. Um, moving right along to 1989, another sleeper that I've never seen anyone. Well, no, let me not say never. I have, have seen very few people um, discuss. It's called Anucci. Anucci, I got the one for men. Stand by, let me grab this. I got a table full of fragrances right here. So this is called Anucci. This is the one for men. There's one for women, which I've never smelled, do not have. I've always worn a Anucci man. 
Uh, I used to wear it in an oil. I got it many years ago in an oil stand and didn't realize it was based on a real, I thought it was one of the oil mask confections, but it is uh, based on the real fragrance, of course, clearly. So I went and hunted it down and I love it. I love Anucci. I put a few people on to this. It's wonderful for layering. It goes real well with uh, Creed Sublime Vanille, Sublime, Sublime Vanilla. I forget what it's called, but it layers well with so many things, but it's stellar alone. Wonderful for the heat, for hot weather. Let me see if I, did I capture the notes for Anucci? I did. Okay, so 1989. Top notes, jasmine, chamomile, citrus notes. The citrus notes come across the, that uh, bergamot blast in the beginning. Um, and woodsy notes. The mid is lavender, vetiver, patchouli. The base is musk, amber, and again, oak moss. You see it's becoming a... Uh, in the older fragrances, you see oak moss a lot. You know what I like about this bottle? Because I'm childish. <laughs> Every time you open it up, it's say, like, <laughs> I don't know why it tickles me. <laughs> this is so dumb. I used to do that with my um, my cousin, stick your finger in my face. <laughs> Can't do it now because I got nails on, but I love it. Anucci is a what? Oh, I know she's good. It's so citrusy in the beginning. It's real bergamot heavy. It's really fresh. And what, it's just not like anything else I've smelled. Compliments galore with this on. And you don't need much of it. Do I need, let me see if I can. Nice little atomizer on it. Gosh, you don't need much of this at all. And I still continue to, although I have the bottle, still use the oil because I don't want it to be gone. Um, and as a runner up to that, there's a Anucci Oud. I'm not sure what year Anucci Oud was launched, but it's essentially the same DNA as Anucci, just with a little more, you know, that woody, oody thing going on. Really, really to, to the untrained notes, you cannot tell the difference between the two of these, though. Mm, not worth it to get the both of them. Um, plus the Anucci Oud is a little harder to find. I believe there's an Anucci Rose as well. I've never smelled that, but it exists. Um, so check that out, Anucci, wonderful. Well priced as well. Let's see, we made it to 1989. Let's move into the 90s. What we got? One of my favorite things. 1990. It's green. It is floral to some degree, but mostly green. Um, there's patchouli, which I is my favorite thing, and cedar and vetiver and amber. It's just, it's just a concoction of the most wonderful shit. Let me just get to it. Ralph Lauren Safari. I love this stuff. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. You you just have to smell this on yourself. Let me walk you through the notes. Although I'm not sure they're gonna give you a clear picture of what this is like. This is so goddamn good to me. Top notes are galbanum. I'm not familiar with what is it? Tagetus to to, it's T-A-G-E-T-S, Fort Gibb. I do not know how to pronounce it. That is not a note I'm familiar with. Um, Narcissus, hyacinth, orange, black currant, mandarin orange, and cassis in the top. In the mids, we have more narcissus, orris root, rosemary, Italian jasmine, rose, and orange blossom. And in the base is vetiver, amber, sandalwood, cedar, and patchouli. This is another one. The opening is just so evocative to me. I, I remember when I first smelled this, I, it was like, ooh, <laughs> like, ooh, <laughs> so good. Because you hear the name Safari and think one thing, like I, I was thinking more like sort of animalic, uh, oodish sort of st stinky sort of, sort of notes. It's, it's bright and refreshing but still sort of grounded and earthy and, and it's got a bit of a, a hint of sweetness to it this is wonderful and this is another one of those things that every single time i wear it every single time i wear it what do you have on what do you have on i'll be like i don't know <laughs> um so that's ralph Lauren safari moving right along let's see we made it to 1990 where do we go from here where did we go from here? 
Now here's one that I don't know what year it came out and I can't find it anywhere online. The year it came out. Hexy. This is called Hexy and it's about Hexy. It is so difficult to find information about this fragrance. It's it's okay. I don't I don't I haven't fallen in love with this, but I've kept it. You know, and I'm gonna keep it because I, I want to see what the bottle does over time, how how it matures. Um, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I need to. I think I need to just wear it. I wear it in the house, but I'm afraid to wear it outside because I'm sort of iffy about it. It reminds me a lot of um, Rihanna's Rogue. It's got that plum thing going on, but with that woody sort of pencil shaving vibe going, which is difficult. It's that's a difficult sort of one for me. And this reminds me of that, although it doesn't share any of those notes. In fact, let me read all the notes to Hexy. Okay, so in the top it claims there's gardenia, um, freesia, coriander, jasmine. Um and I'm not sure how these are broken. These bottom ones are broken out into mid and bottom. But there's, uh, is that, what did I write y'all? I don't have my glasses. Is it Madras? Uh, vanilla, Damask Rose, Vetiver, and Patchouli. Quite simple. I don't know how to describe this to you. If you've smelled Rihanna Rogue, it's kind of like that, but a little more fruity. Not, it's not so plum heavy. heavy. It's like other fruits. Maybe I do like this. It's just so different than anything else I have. I think that's what it is. It's just, I don't, I don't have any nostalgia to hook it onto. It's not familiar to me. I'm still getting to know this one and I'm committed to doing so. I'm going to continue to stay with this. I, I do, I, I like it. Hexy by Hexy. So that's another vintage one. Cannot tell you what year it came out, but you can look at the bottom and know it's either the uh, late 80s, early 90s. Um, moving right along. So whatever year that was. Oh, you know what I like? So 1997, Benetton. You know, United Colors of Benetton released a fragrance called Hot. And it was also cold. And they came in these bottles. It was like a real ambery color juice. It had a, a top that looked like, you know, the um, the hot and cold knobs on the sink. It looked like that, hot, and then it, it was red, and there was a blue one for cold. Um, I recently went, because I was craving that smell, went hunting for it online and couldn't find any of the original style bottle, bottles. And I, I'm still, I still want one. So if you know where to find one, tell me. Forgive me, my energy is so low. Um, they changed the bottle, so I don't get to have that for my shelf for nostalgia's sake, but this scent is, it, and the juice color has changed also. It looks like it's darkening, because when I first got this, it was damn near clear, so maybe this will end up being the ambery color or close to it, that the, oh, 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 the original one was. I love this shit. I love it. This one does seem a little more subdued than the, what it used to be. It used to be really rich, like a really, like I said, ambery juice, nice and rich. Ooh, I love this stuff. Let me tell you what um, what the notes are for hot. Did I write down the notes for hot? I did. So 1997 is a, uh, what did you write, Bianca? Brazilian, I think that says rosewood. Child Brazilian rosewood, mandarin orange, lemon, bergamot. The mids are apricot, iris, uh, wa water jasmine, lily of the valley, vanilla, sandalwood, amber, um, musk, oak, mo oak moss, and cedar. I really should have on glasses. Y'all have to forgive me. I am blind a little bit. <laughs> but those are the notes. And this, it, it's wonderful. Get this. It's cheap. You can buy it online. Let me know what you think of it. Anybody can wear this. It's, a, it's unisex. Uh, it's timeless. This is a smell that's never going to get old. If you come across a bottle with darker juice than this and with that the uh, knob top, get that one instead because this is a little less potent than the original version. So good. So damn good. I love hot. I really love this.
and, and, and disclaimer, perhaps I am following it through my own nostalgia and memories of, you know, happier times. 97. But this is so good to me. I still love hot very much. Um, what haven't we covered that I want to talk about? I pulled out a bunch of, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifty, six, a bunch of fragrances on this table, but I don't want to spend the time going through them all. I'm just trying to pick the ones that really stick out to me the most as timeless and beautiful and complex and, um, better than what's out now. <laughs> um, okay. So this one came out. In that capucci is oh it smells so good on me um where are you desiree how much time i got left on here um so this one came out in 1990. the bottle's hideous it's weighty and clunky and doesn't stay together well at all i don't know what the hell they were thinking with this design but this fragrance is called desiree the cap is shit. Don't stay on. Don't even click on. What? The fuck were they thinking? I mean, it's good quality glass. It's heavy and all of that. I love this stuff. I love this stuff. All right, let's get into the notes. The top notes are Madagascar, Elongi Long, Aldehydes, Pineapple, Coriander, and Bergamot. The mids are Chinese Osmanthus, Tuberose, Cassius, Cassius, I'm sorry, Jasmine, Orange Blossom, Violet, and Rose. And the base is Sandalwood, Somalian Apopanax, Vanilla, Plum, Musk, Patchouli, and Raspberry. When I tell you I can't point to any of that, <laughs> I can't like pick the, it's, it's just a good, good, wonder, it's a good blend. And this thing wears beautifully from top to bottom. The bottom is the, the deep dry down that is where I, where I get mine. <laughs> like, it is heavenly to me. It comes off as a little bit smoky, tobacco-y, although those aren't listed as notes as all to me. At, at, woo! My brain just glitched on me. All of those Although those are not listed as notes at all. I'm tired. Can you tell? I'm going to have to cut this short and get a break, but Desiree is beautiful. If you can stomach a vintage fragrance, if you're not afraid of anything dated or smelling like a quote-unquote granny, this shit is incredible to me. I love Desiree, and it's not expensive. I think I got mine from, what's the name of that little site I use? I like it. I'll link it because I got it pretty cheaply and they ship super fast. I think the place is based in uh, Philadelphia. Um, and I'm in Maryland, so the turnaround wasn't really quick. The shipping was quick and it was well packaged and all of that. Um, I love Desiree. I wear this a lot, a lot, and I get a lot of compliments on it. Despite it smelling dated, like it's, it's readily identifiable as dated, but boy, it's incredible. Um, some honorable mentions, and I only named them so because I just got them today and I, I haven't sat with them yet. I, I'm still getting to know them. And based on, again, recommendation from one of you, um, I picked up Elizabeth Taylor's Passion today. I sprayed it on myself at work. And the dry down of this baby is about to be one of my favorite things. Thank you for this recommendation. I love this. This came out in 1988. And I haven't uh, familiarized myself with the note list, notes listing yet because, again, I want to give it, give myself time to, uh, you know, get good and acquainted with it, see how it likes my body, see how, how, how I'm going to wear it and with what and all of that stuff. And I also, because I want to do a designate, a dedicated video to, I also got diamonds and rubies, which reminds me, it, it, they don't smell anything a lot, but it's sort of, it's like an oriental that reminds me of Roberto Cavalli. Um... I don't know why it reminds me of that, but my brain went immediately there when I sniffed it. I don't hate it, but I need to get to know it. This one, though, this one I know I love already, and I'm thank you for this recommendation. I'm going to spend time with these and give them a good, thorough, uh, dedicated sit-down. 
I may even pick up a couple other Elizabeth Taylors um, to see how I feel about them. But that's it for tonight. That if you don't, if you know any of those, let me know what you think of them, how you wear them, when you start wearing them, and, and all of that stuff. How do you feel about vintage quote unquote fragrances or dated uh, quote unquote fragrances? Um, let me know what you think, how you feel. Child, I'm going to sleep. I'm tired. I can barely craft a complete thought right now. My, my brain is going. <laughs> I just wanted to um, sit and talk about this while I was on my mind. And um, that's it. That's it. That's all. I will do a video on this uh, Elizabeth Taylor passion because, boy, I like this. And just in time for my birthday, too. I think that's going to be my birthday set. So thank you again, uh, friend, for that recommendation. Your name, your handle escapes me at the moment. I'm not, of course, not looking in my my YouTube to know it, but I, I will uh, give you a shout out in the um, the description of this video. So thank y'all for bearing with me and my little glitchy brain and glitchy tongue and my, my low energy <laughs> today. It's been a long, long week. I thank you for your time and your attention. Uh, your correspondence. I thank y'all for actually talking to me. It, it excites me when I see my little notifications go off and it's y'all talking to me. <laughs> what? It makes me happy. So I thank you for it. Till next time, I do hope you are well. Deuces.